everyone welcome back to my channel my name is Katarina if you're new here welcome I post all types of videos vlogs faith talks Jesus lifestyle things so if you're interested please subscribe okay for this video we are going to be talking about how to stay committed to Jesus so let's say you're just getting back into church you're um, on the track to you know getting your relationship closer with Jesus want to get right with God as we like to say you just got baptized whatever it may look like for you or you're a longtime Christian that kind of has been in a spiritual rut I have some um, some tips for you to continue your way with the Lord or to just hop right into your relationship with Jesus so I wrote down a few things I prayed about it and I'm really excited to share with you guys so I'm just gonna get my phone and we're gonna go through some things together dun, 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 dun. okay so I had this idea um actually in my phone because I feel like it's something that it can be neglected if like we're not careful like our relationship with Jesus can be neglected and I feel like uh, some Christians can just get baptized continue to go to church every Sunday and then that's about it and their relationship with Jesus doesn't really grow and they actually don't live in abundance the way that God wants us to live so I wanted to make this video just to give you some tips on how to grow your relationship with Christ and how to stay committed to Jesus hey stop it I'm not even going to cut this out. My two cats are in my room. I barely let them in my room, but they're in here. And this is why I don't let them in my room, because they just decided to fight. So hopefully they don't do that again. All right. So, uh, okay. So the number one thing that is important in your relationship with Christ and helping you stay committed to Jesus is prayer and like intimate time with Jesus. So prayer is super important, like very important to sit and pray with God. Make intentional time each day to do this, whether it's for 10 minutes or for an hour. Whatever your schedule can do right now, um, you know, do what you can, but also be intentional about it. Um, praying is definitely one of the biggest things that you can do. Um, you feel connected to God. You're giving your problems to God. You're thanking God for things. You're communing. You're talking with God. It's so important to do that. If you would just take at least 10 minutes out of your day to do that, your day could be drastically different compared to if you didn't. So prayer is really key. Alongside with that, hearing from God is even better. To sit and actually hear from God, oh my gosh, like, that's the best part of my time with God when I spend time with God because it's one thing to sit and like ramble and like you know just like throw up all your stuff to Jesus which is I'm not saying that that's a bad thing but when you actually sit down and you hear from God and you like take a moment to silence your flesh and to silence your mind from running and thinking you can actually hear from God and then he gives you um things that he wants you to do and things he wants to tell you and plans and and strategy like wisdom all these things insight and that is like one of the best things I love about spending time with God is I actually get to hear from him he's a God that talks to you and that wants to talk to you and um it's just the best thing ever so what I recommend with that is having like some type of journal or something open where you can write down what he tells you because personally for me when I hear from God like the next 20 minutes I kind of forget what he says or like the next day I'll forget because I know it's not me talking it's him talking so I love I love to write it down because I can go back and refer back to what he said and a lot of what he tells me comes to pass because he's telling the truth um well all of what he tells me comes to pass it's just sometimes maybe sometimes I'm throwing my flesh in there and you know it can it can get you know messy sometimes it's hard to discern but if the more that you continue to sit and talk with God and then take a moment to sit and listen and hear from God you will be able to discern what is his voice and what is your own voice and then what is the enemy and the enemy is usually the easiest to discern because he be lying um so yeah there's that but yes that's number one like literally number one to help your relationship with Jesus grow to help your you know help your sanity like to help keep your peace maintain your peace and continue to grow in God is really praying and hearing from God is so important um, the next thing I would say is to read your Bible. Read your Bible every single day. Obviously, if you miss a day, you're not going to hell. I'm not saying that. 
but to make it a point to be intentional about reading your Bible, at least in the morning, at night, whatever it is, it does, there's no specific way. Jesus never said, like, you have to read your Bible in the morning. Jesus never said that. There were times in the Bible when he went and he, he went early in the morning to go and pray. And I do believe there is something so significant, something so important about the morning time because it is the first of your day. And this is the, the um, usually the time when you're most like, you have the most, well, not necessarily energy, but you're the most um, attentive because you have nothing else on your brain from the whole day. You don't have the whole day weighing on you. So there is something I think really special about the morning. Personally, I love the morning time with Jesus. It's one of my best, like I, if I can do it in the morning every day, I would. Just because I start my day with Jesus and like everything else is just usually really good. Even though things may not go according to plan, I've had my Jesus time and I can always go back to that for like my peace during the day. So definitely reading your Bible. Reading your Bible, we need to read our Bible. It's literally our manual for life. And Jesus wrote this whole thing, God wrote this whole thing for us so that we can be able to know what to do in our life, um, be able to help other people, be able to encourage other people. And it's just so important important to do. And you get to learn more about God. And that also grows your relationship with God and help you stay committed to him. So Bible, 100%. Next thing I would say is church. Church, church, church. A lot of people don't want to go to church. It's biblical to go to church. The Bible says, do not neglect meeting together like some have the habit of doing. It's so important. Church is so important because, first of all, gathering together, like, it, there's something so beautiful about coming together with people who are like-minded with you, all people who want to serve God and serve the kingdom. It's so beautiful to have that, to be able to go to that. And a lot of people in other, like, in other countries, they're not allowed to be a Christian. They're not allowed to go to church. So we have a privilege here in America and other countries, too, to be able to go to church and go to serve um, God and to worship God and to spend time with other people who are like us. It's so important. Number one, it's a beautiful treasure. Number two, accountability is so important. If you knew that somebody was watching you and um, and you were held accountable to somebody about something, you will grow and you will like be able to um, just learn and grow in that versus when you're by yourself and trying to do Christianity by yourself. It's not to be done by yourself because the enemy will come in and tell you lies and they will be like led, led astray and don't know how you got there and it's because you were not planted in a church. Being planted in a church is so important. Don't let the devil and don't let the world tell you that it's not because it is. Alongside that, church community, going to Bible studies, going to young adults events, going to youth if you're a middle school or high schooler, going to different groups that your church may have, like going to different events that they have, meeting other people, becoming friends with them, like going out, being intentional about going out with them, hanging out, like having godly friends will literally change so much in your life. And alongside that, godly friends, having godly relationships, having somebody that you can call and they can pray for you and you don't feel shame or, you know, feel judged or getting weird advice from your friend from before who's going to tell you that um, something about their horoscope or something about your horoscope and that's why things are happening to you. Like, no, you need godly wisdom in your life. You need godly guidance in your life. And um, these people can pray into your life and actually help you with your issues instead of just giving you vain things that will not help you. It will actually make you a lot worse than how you were. So that's another thing. Fasting. Fasting is so important. Fasting. I'm not saying, now let me preface this. I'm not saying any of this in a religious way of like, you have to do this, you have to do this, you have to do this. These are just things that will help you stay committed to God. They will because what they do is they refine you. They renew you. They make you more like Jesus. So I'm not saying you have to do all these things, but I'm saying if you do these things, you will be a lot better off than how you are if you don't do these things. So just take it with a grain of salt. I'm not saying you have to do all these things right away, but I'm saying pray about these things. Help God to help you with some of these things. If you're struggling, the Holy Spirit can help you because all these things are good and they are biblical. So fasting. Fasting for me is something that I take serious when I do it and I want to do it a lot more than I do it now. Um, I've done a couple fasts here, but I definitely want to be more intentional about doing it because it is so important to like when you silence your flesh from eating food, you can be able to hear God more than versus when you are eating food. It's just how it works. You'll be able to discern God's voice more and it's just showing that you're that you're able to sacrifice something for God. Like that's literally what it is. So prayer and fasting is so important. Um, 
two more things what you're listening to and what you're watching um what kind of music are you listening to um if you're not listening to worship um christian r&b christian rap christian um anything christian uh country music that's christian like if you're not listening to christian music in general then what are you listening to because whatever you're listening to is feeding you something it's feeding you an agenda it's feeding you um something that is not good for you like discern what's going into your ear gates because you may think oh it's just a song but it's not just a song you know it affects you either makes you angry it makes you upset or sad it makes you emotional it makes you have lustful thoughts it makes you prideful like there's so many things that music can do to you it's crazy um so be careful with what you're listening to and what you're watching what are you watching? What kind of shows are you watching? What kind of movies are you watching? A lot of watching a lot of movies with violence, um, um, scary movies, horror movies, uh, a lot of movies with a lot of sexual things. What are you intaking? What are your eyes seeing? Because that also affects your brain. And that also allows the enemy to come in and distort things and make you feel things that you don't want to feel. So be mindful of that. And then the last thing I will say is who are you following on social media? Social media is such a big, big thing in our world right now, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, or whatever it's called now. I don't know what else you can follow or be on. It consumes our world currently, for the most part, if you let it. And it is so important to make sure that you don't have people who are not according to your lifestyle that you're following because you will take on things that they do and that you will make it a part of your life. People are influential. If you're around, like, let's say your best friend or a really close family member, after time, you will realize, oh, we say the same things now. We say the same jokes now. We even laugh the same. We even sigh the same. Like, you will pick up things from this person because you spend a lot of time with them. It's just what it is. Same thing with social media. Oh, you see so-and-so went on a vacation to Paris. Oh, I wish I could go on, on a vacation to Paris. Oh, you see so-and-so bought... A new Stanley Cup. Oh, let me go buy a new Stanley Cup. That looks really cool. You will start to take things on without you even noticing. And then here you are. You're somebody you're completely you don't want to be. But it's because you're being influenced by these people and you're not even realizing it. So just be mindful of what you're watching on social media. Who you're following. Um, who you're following. What you're reading. What what posts they're, read, they're, they're posting or what they're talking about what they're writing about, if they're writing some new agey stuff that sounds like manifestation and all that crap, be very mindful, be very careful. If anything is off to you, don't take it in, don't come into agreement with it. Be very mindful about what you are taking in because it does affect you. And it does affect your walk with Christ. Um, and it affects a lot of things. So those are my tips. Um, I think that's all. Um, I hope this helped you in some way. I did pray and I praise the Lord. Like, I hope this video helps one person at least. Um, just to help you stay committed to Jesus. Now, there's so many other things that you can do. I'm sure that I'm forgetting. I mean, stewarding your body, stewarding your finance as well. Um, like, so many things that you can do that can help you stay committed to Jesus. Um, that, you know, and if you want more, look in the Bible. The Bible will give you plenty of examples of so many things but I hope this blessed you in some way if you know of anyone who is struggling with their walk with God and walk with Jesus and struggling with any of these things whether it be fasting or church or friends or whatever it is um share this video with them and I hope it blesses them in some way also the goal is to continue to grow in Jesus grow in Christ continue to be more like him and less like us continue to live in abundance because that's what God came for um one of my main point of my channel and most of what I do in my purpose in life is to show people to live in abundance with Jesus. John 10 10 says the enemy comes to kill, steal and destroy. But Jesus came so that we can have life and have it abundantly. So a lot of people get caught up on the part where it says the enemy comes to steal, kill and destroy, which he does. But they forget the but part. But Jesus came so that we can have life and have it in abundance. He didn't just come to die on the cross for our sins, which is so amazing. And I'm grateful that he did because I wouldn't be able to get into heaven if it weren't for him. But he also came so that we can have life on this earth in abundance. We aren't supposed to be depressed. We aren't supposed to have anxiety. We aren't supposed to struggle with things. We aren't supposed to 
this, that, and the other. We're not supposed to look like the world. We're called to be set apart. And this is how we be set apart, continuing our walk with Jesus, allowing him to prune us and become more like him and to grow in our relationship with him. I'm not saying it's going to be perfect. I'm not, I'm not saying it's not going to be messy sometimes. But as long as you're continuing to walk with him and to trust him through everything and do these things that will help you to grow in your relationship with him, then you will be just fine. And um, yeah, so hope this blessed you. Hope this blesses somebody that you're going to share it with. Thank you so much for the support. Thank you so much for subscribing. Um, I really appreciate it. Please let me know on Instagram or comment down below what other videos you'd like to see. Um, and Or if you have any prayer requests, you can also DM me on Instagram as well. I have my information in the description box. So thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate all the support. Don't forget to be the best person that you can be and to love on people. Remember, Jesus loves you and I'll see you guys all soon. Bye.